look, the return of the kosher pig, people ask me always, why is it called, uh, why you call it pig? You know, the pig in Judaism is a, is a picture of Rome. Rome is Christianity, okay? Rome is Christianity. Now, it's interesting. I want you to listen carefully for just one moment for this. I think it will, you will understand it. Uh, there is a passage that says in, the, in some rabbinical writing that in the future the pig will return to Israel and will become kosher. Who it is? The Christianity will come return to Israel and will become kosher again. And what they will do? They will return the crown of glory to its rightful owner. Now listen. There is an interesting passage very quickly that I would like to show you. It says, why is his name called pig? Because in the future, God, the word pig to return, will return, him to the return to the crown as the days of old. Who will return the crown to the day of old? I believe that it's not going to be Christianity. I believe that it is actually going to be the Messiah himself. There is a passage on the end times because we are living in the end times now. So I want to take five more minutes to describe this end time event to you. So you understand how these ten end time events are going to come. Okay? Forward. In that day, King Messiah will appear and it will be called the festival. This is from the Zohar. It will be called the festival of what? Of the ingathering. The one name of festival of the ingathering, if you don't know it, is one more name for the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Booths. And as it stated in Isaiah 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will set his hand again on the second time to recover the remnant of his people. And it's called Sukkot. All seven layers cover Israel like a sukkah. And look how is this day going to partake. I want you to put it in the context of Zechariah 12. It says there will be 319 heavens that will be shaken. And you, they hint that one of the heavens that was concealed from the six days of creation, as it takes from one of the heavenly hosts crown, the same crown that he took and he had upon his head in the Exodus. And what he will do will take the crown that he wore when he opened the Red Sea. And he will take this crown and he will put it in the head of the Mashiach. And Mashiach will be the one who will hold this awesome crown. The reason for the mourning in Jerusalem is because the Jewish people are going to look at Yeshua and say, anybody but Yeshua, anybody but this Messiah, son Joseph. Remember Joseph in the story? His brethren did not recognize him. Remember? But at the end of the day, who is the one who brought the redemption to Israel? It was Joseph who brought the redemption to Israel. I want you to understand how the same time event is going to come in. Benefact Revelation 7 tell us how they are going to take place. It said there will be four angels taking a stand in the four corners of the earth, all in the earth. And what it said so that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees. And I saw another angel coming up and rising off the sun, having Chotam, the seal of God, of the living one. And he cried in a great voice, and the four angels, there were, there were angels who have given the earth and the sea saying what do they say do not harm the land nor the sea nor the trees until we have marked with the seal of the servant of our God on our forehead and what I saw I saw 144,000 having been marked with the seal from all the tribes of Israel Okay, 12,000 from Yehuda, 12,000 of Reuben, 12,000 from God. Notice there is no mention of two houses, friends. By the way, there is no mention of two Matter of fact, look at the good news for you. You ask sister, how is it going to go play, play out in the end of the day? Here's the way it's going to play out. After the this, I look in a great multitude, which was numbered, not be able to see from every nation. 
And what are they going to be holding in their hand? Lulavs. What is a lulav? This is revelation. Hello, this is supposed to be not Jewish. <laughs> lulav is what we're waving in Sukkot. That means the question you asked before, brother, where should you be? You're going to be in Jerusalem. You're going to be in Jerusalem holding a little, your little lulav. <laughs> buying in the marketplace. $29.99. <laughs> Lulav.org, get ready today. <laughs> and before this, there will be the Lamb of God, Kitten Lulav in his hand. You have to understand what is going to be taking place. Mashiach is going to appeal to the Jewish people from the heaven. They're going to cry out in this day of distress, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. And when they cry, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, they look upon the, the one who they pierce. Okay, but there's going to be a big surprise. It's not going to be who they expect. They're going to cry because they're going to get the last guy they expect. Like Joseph was the last guy that, that his brother expected. Are you following this? It's all here in Revelation. And this is the reason our sages tell us that there is a prince in heaven. And his name is the pig is God, or the pig of God. And this particular prince is called the persecutor of Israel. And in the future, God will return him to Israel to be what? Israel defender. Now, you have to understand, this is why the pig is not just Christianity, is the Messiah himself. Now, you say, well, wait, Yeshua never was the persecutor of Israel. Oh, really? Oh, really? Every curse and every calamity that came on the Jewish people, the rabbi said, came because we saw Joseph. Do you know that the rabbi said that? Every calamity that came upon us as Jews came because the selling of Joseph. I want you to look at me very fast. I wish I had time. That's such a wonderful lesson. I don't have time, though. We don't have time. 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 We do have time. I want you to look at me in the last story. Remember I told you this. Who is Christianity represent? Christianity represents Rome and Esau. Isn't it interesting that the Jewish people teach that Esau, if you take the letter Esau and you flip them, you get the name Yeshua. That Yeshua is reincarnation of Esau. Now think for a second with me. Look for a second with me. This is a very interesting story that will show you the entire gospel and Zechariah 12 to 10 in another light. It says there in the story, and Jacob went alone and the rest of the men until the breaking of the day, and he saw prevailed not against him. He touched the all of his thigh, and the all of Jacob's thigh was strained and wrestled with him, and he said, let me go for the day break. And he says, I will not let you go except if you bless me. And he asked, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he says, your name no longer should be called Jacob, but your name will be called what? Israel, for thou striving with God and men, and you have prevailed. Now let me ask you a question for a minute. Who do you think Jacob fought with? Who do you think Jacob fought with, friends? Who do you think Jacob fought with? You think it's Messiah? I'm going to tell you something. Most of Judaism, 99% of Judaism will disagree with you. Who he fought with? Our rabbis explained that he was fighting with Satan. With Satan. All of Judaism say it's Satan who will appear as a sub. All of Judaism will say he appeared with Satan. There is a little problem in this story though. Why would you want Satan blessing? Do you want blessing, Satan? Don't let me go until you bless me. <laughs> Doesn't sound good, right? Doesn't sound right. However, I want to tell you something. 
that all of Judaism says it's Satan. But pay close attention because you're going to see one of the greatest mysteries in the Hebrew Bible that will reveal to you the mystery of Zechariah 12. This is what the Zohar says on this. He says, he opened the discussion, say, take, I pray you, my blessing that brought to you when Jacob saw the accuser, Satan, that night who wrestled with him in the passage of your book. He saw him in an image of Esau, but he did not recognize him until the dawn rose. As soon as the dawn rose, he saw him and, uh, and with his face both visible and concealed. He viewed his image that was like the image of Esau and immediately realized that he was the minister of Esau, namely Smile. Smile in Judaism is the name of Satan. He struck him, it is written, and he said, let me go for it's that day break. And the friend retorted with him because he had time. He had arrived to sing praise to the Holy One. Blessed be he. Therefore, it says for the day break. So Judaism says it is Satan. However, Judaism said it wasn't really Satan. Are you ready? He masqueraded himself as Satan. And by the name, his name changed from what to what? From Yaakov to what? To Israel. So in one level, it's a pure Satan. But another level, remember what I explained to you when we talk about God's son? You ask you who is God's son, and you say Israel, and I told you, yeah, it's Israel and the Messiah. One of the name of the Mashiach in Hebrew is the name the lad or the boy. It's one of the names of the Messiah in rabbinic literature. And pay close attention to the question that he asked him. He asked him the question, what you should he asked him, why are you asking for what? Why are you asking for my name? Everybody see that? Right? The water, why are you asking for my name? It's, and he told him, so I can change your name from what? From Jacob to Israel? It's an acronym for who? The lad, the na'ar. And what does it mean, the na'ar? Have mercy on your inheritance. In essence, here is the greatest cover-up in human history. He says to him, and Jacob asks him, tell me, I pray for you. Why are you asking for thy name? And he said, why did it stand after my name? After? And he blessed him there. Notice he blessed him there, right? So in one level, it is one appears as Satan. But here he's really his identity. Because his name, Leshmi, means the Nar. And what is it? The Lord's mission is to change the name of Jacob to Israel in order for Israel to receive favor from God. It is in reference to the mission of redemption of the lad, the angel that he is fighting. The word now means have mercy on your inheritance. Because when Israel was a child, then I loved him. And after that, I call up my son. Do you understand what is happening? He appears as Satan. But he represents the greatest blessing to the Jewish people. He is the one who changed Israel's name to Israel. This is the reason. Remember the great cover-up, Isaac? Jacob and Esau and what the scripture says and Jacob went into the Isaac his father and he felt him and he says the voice is the voice of Jacob but the hands are the hands of Esau the one who appears as Satan Esau Esau is the one who is going to be the greatest blessing to the Jewish people. He is going to masquerade as something. The name of Jesus brought more calamity to the Jewish people. And the reason that they will look upon him with their peers is because they say, you 
every calamity is coming in your name. And you are the kosher people come now to redeem us and to restore us. It is impossible. Are you following this? By the way, we're going to start the concert at 6 left. You don't worry. Because I'm a white of time. I hope you guys can stick around being fed. Because I want to bring this point. You remember what I told you before? You remember the Rocky movies? Everything go around and around and around. I want to conclude with one thing. Who is this battle in the end of the day with? It's the battle with Esav. Now you know who Esav is. Esav in one level is Satan himself. It is a battle between Esav. Okay, so in one level it represents the Messiah. But in another level it represents the the, 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 um, Satan himself. And Israel. Yaakov. Remember Genesis 3.15? It says, and I will put an enmity between thee and between thy woman and between this seed and thy and her seed and shall bruise in your head and they shall bruise their heel. The rabbi said that this is a battle that took place long ago in the garden. A fight between Mashiach and Satan in the garden. That was round one. And what we're talking about here in Zechariah 12 is the final bell is ringing and history is going to repeat itself where it's a battle in the end of the game not between the Jewish people and the nation. It's between a Satan and the Mashiach. That is really what we're talking about, your friends. And what is his in stake? Are you ready? He step on him with what? The hill. Yaakov is from the word Akev. But what, why is he step on him with the hill? You see, the first time, Messiah was down. He went down. But this is like the Rocky movie now. Ding, 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 ding. Rocky is coming back. And this time, uh, Mr. T is not going to take him down. It's not going to happen. This time is coming with a vengeance. And what is this so step? Why did he choose the hill? The word hill is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 7, Parashat Akev. Akev. You know, if you r- read the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, you get exactly 172 words. Do you know that? 172 words. Okay, the word heal have the numerical value of how much? You want to guess? 172. Why? Because it's a part battle for the heal. The rabbi say it's a battle to the relationship between the people and God. I want to put it to you what is in stake in this final battle. Satan is coming against the Messiah. And what is in the stake on the battle? Jewish souls and the souls of entire humanity. And the rabbis teach us, and they said that the heel controls the entire body. Whoever controls the heel is going to control the entire body. And that is what it's about. Yes? And what is the solution to all of this? I will close with this because we are way past our time. Psalm 2. What is the solution for us today? It says that at that time, this is a picture. You want to know what Zechariah 12 is going to look like when they will look upon him with their peers? The Zohar give us another snapshot. And it says, in that time, the Holy One, bless ye, came to him. He kissed him. Remember, he took the tiara that he used when he himself parted Red Sea. And he put it on the head of the Messiah. And he said, faithful shepherd, 
you are indeed my son and the son of the Holy Spirit, of the Shekhinah, the divine spirit. Sages and angels, kiss the son. They all rose and kissed him and accepted him in that day as rabbi and king over them. And we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.